All right, let's go. Three, two, one, and go. All right, Sonic CD, all good futures. So, this Sonic game is quite unique compared to the others in that it has a time travel function. So, all good futures means getting, turning all of the futures into being good. And so the way to do that is to travel to the past and to break the robot generator in every act one and act two stage, and then finish the stage, and that'll create a good future. This can be extremely difficult uh, in some stages to do really quickly, and the first stage is um, panic act one, and now it's exception. Okay. I can't believe that still worked. I completely messed that up. That was not what was going to happen. I, uh, I bounced from the enemy, and that was really awkward. Uh, that normally would have broken the time travel. Fun to figure out how to get back to where I'm supposed to be. Alright, this is where I'm supposed to be. I know where I am now. Everything's good. Everything's good. Damn. I'm gonna flap all the way up here. Up here. Up here. And there's the robot generator that I'm talking about. All the way. Like that. And so I have to do that in every act one and act two stage. So the time travel function, the way it works, is you have to pick up one of those past or future, which I don't want the future ones. And then you have to be running at high speed for three seconds. If you run for one and a half seconds but don't actually activate it, um, it'll break and you'll lose the sign. Break. So, there are some stages like this one where if I do this correctly, you'll see I break it there, I break it here, and I want to start it here. Oh, that was butter smooth. That was beautiful. So, I got myself into a really nice position because when I do this, I lose the speed. So, I'm right on top of this ramp, so I can keep my momentum. Jump, I do jump. Well, that's nice. Alright, I'll just do this again. Heal out, jump up here, make it all the way up there. And that's exactly what I'm Jump up here, in there. Alright, so I don't want to time travel for this future, so I got rid of that one. That was really nice. Get rid of that ramp, bring the speed there. Alright, that's fun through Panic Act 2. So, at the Act 3s, you don't do this because they're basically boss acts, um, but they do change to good future if you get the good future in Act 1 and Act 2. Whereas usually they're just bad future, which it doesn't actually change the boss, but it just changes the level out, the level layout just a little bit. Also changes the music. There's some good music in this game. And the good future music is, in general, a little bit better. So I'm just going to take damage here on purpose, invincibility frames, then hit the boss. Alright, I'm actually going to show off here, alright, this is, um, from this stage onwards, I'm going to be using a trick in the game called moving peel out, and the way it works is, when you charge a peel out, which you've seen, um, in all the stages so far, when I'm holding up and Sonic does what kind of looks like a spin dash, but he's still running, um, if I then pause the game and then transfer into down and forward, and then pause the game again and transfer back into charging a peel out, I'll be moving while charging the peel out, which I'm not supposed to be doing. The game thinks I'm always supposed to be stationary, and so because of this, I can go through walls, like that. And so, in basically every single stage from here forward, I'm going to be going through many, many, many walls. But this game, unlike if you watch the Sonic 3 and Knuckles run from before, the walls aren't always solid. In fact, they almost always aren't solid. Um, you generally get stopped by ledges everywhere. Alright, so here's the little pass thing for this level. This stage is a bit of a troll in that. There's the robot generator there. You can still see the little outline of it, but there's actually no pass signpost before the robot generator on the level. You have to pack that. So it's just doing a little time travel there. While backtracking, the reaction time there, just got the generator. This is all going really nicely. Nice, very happily named Collision Chaos. Oh no, that's terrible. Oh, 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 beautiful. Save it. That was the, the one uh, trajectory you can get off the flipper that's really, really bad. And you can end up on the bottom part there and just get stuck with springs and bumpers flying around everywhere. I say, I'm really happy about that. Alright, Collision Chaos 2. This level is really brutal. All the levels in this run are actually quite brutal because if you lose where you're trying to do the time travel, finding another post can be almost impossible. So, jump. I'm trying to jump off this. Uh, there's a one frame trick where if you jump off the, the very top part of this edge here, you can end up above the roof, just like this. Give a little bit, pull down here. 
All right, that was really good. That's actually a lot more difficult than it looks. Uh, sometimes the spin dash just doesn't go into the shield box. Sometimes the inputs get dropped. Sometimes you don't actually make it up to that point. You can very easily lose the signpost there. And if you do, like it is in almost every scenario, it's really bad. But so here, I'm actually going to time travel back into the present. Um, it's just a tiny little bit faster. It makes a flipper show up. The level layouts, they change in... Uh, depending on what time it actually is. But so there's a flipper here, and I'm going to use that to go over the roof again. Ooh, really nice. Really nice. Making that is quite tight. Jumping up to the top of there. Let's go over here. Do a little moving peel art MPO into the wall. Zips at the end. Beautiful. Alright, so. Collision Chaos 3. This boss is the worst in the game. It's so bad that we don't even do it. So, all you have to do to trigger the end of any any Act 3 is to just hit the cap shell at the end. And in this stage, I'm going to just moving peel out through this wall, and then jump over here, hit the cap shell, and finish. Really easy, really good stage. Moving on to Tidal Tempest. I feel like I'm going to say this about every single stage. Incredibly brutal if this goes wrong. What I'm going to do at the start here is I'm going to jump off uh, right at the start and I'm going to try and bounce off two of these enemies here. And if I do it right, that was close. Ooh, that was close. All right. End up yet again on top of the roof. Just fall down here. Two, one, two, three. I do not want to time travel to the future there, so I had to break that one. Pick up the past one. That's the one I want. Okay, and while I'm in the air, time travel to the past. So if you're in the air, you can't actually lose or gain the ability to time travel. So if you're already on the path to time travel, if you're in the air, you'll keep it until you hit the ground again. Uh, no matter what speed you're going at, so instead of using that property a little bit there. Really nice, that was a really good title for this one. Okay, so title step is two. Kind of the first stage where you see there are um, some stages where there's cycle events, and so what that means is there are objects that start moving as soon as the, uh, the stage starts. So there's a little block uh, at the start of the stage where if I position it just perfectly, this one right here, it'll just stop me. I'll hit the spring and go through this little gap. That's perfect. Beautiful. Right, the rest of this stage is fairly simple until we do the time travel to the past, and then it gets really complicated. You're only going to see one option, but... Uh, I'm going to time travel here. This is kind of one of the more intended places that you're supposed to be time traveling in the game through the level design. Um, or one of the ones where they give you a free time travel. I guess would be more accurate. But I'm going to do a moving peel out here and then go inside this wall. Oh, that's really... That was a really, really fast zip. I was expecting a slow zip. Um, but you can get different speeds out of, the, out of the wall once you zip, once you do an MPO inside. Uh, and that was a really, really, really fast zip. Um, and so I just had to press right to mitigate myself because it's possible if you go too fast that you'll actually get pushed by different objects inside the floor, which is not what I want to happen at all. But it's still fine. Saved that really nicely. So Tidal Tempest 3, this is the hardest boss in the game by far. Uh, it's actually a really cool boss. Um, I'm going to, once again, MPO into the boss arena. And so it's going to glitch out. Uh, visually, you're not going to be able to see what's going on. But it's going to take a little bit just to focus because this is really hard. Mm, didn't quite get it. Alright, so this guy, he's got air bubbles of what those actually are. Um, yeah, second cycle. Alright, that's not too bad. But he's got air bubbles, um, and he's got lots of them. But so if you do that perfectly, you take out one of the air bubbles, and then you go through that tiny little gap, and uh, you only have to hit him once, and then he's dead. But the gap gets bigger and bigger as he has less and less air bubbles because they take up less spe uh, more space. 
because he evens them out every time he comes through his attack pattern. It's all right. Moving on to Quartz Quadrant. All right, that went well. Perfect, perfect. All right. I'm, I was going to say I'm notoriously bad at this time travel here, and that tracks because that was not what was ideal, but got the back up perfectly, so I'm going to land right on top of the, the robot generator here. This is much better than what normally happens to me. I normally don't keep my uh, vertical momentum there and end up falling down and wasting like 20 seconds. So that was actually really nice, comparatively. That's fine. There was just another MPO at the end there. You see I got stopped by the edge? That's usually what stops you inside walls, and it's why you can't just go through walls forever, because if you're charging a peel-out, um, you can't do it on, a, on an edge. So if you hit an edge while you're moving, it actually stops you completely. Um, and you saw it there. On that one, you can actually go through that edge and go right to the end. It's very rare, though. It doesn't actually usually happen. Just a little bit of magic to aim for. Time travel early there. But you also notice on that one, when I'm doing the moving peel out, um, I actually move at different speeds, and it's based on how much I charge the peel out. So if I charge the peel out completely before I start the moving part of it, basically, I'll move at the speed of a peel out. But if I just charge it just a tiny little bit, I'll move at basically snail's pace when I'm doing the moving peel out part. It's really important for some of the other instances of moving peel out, which you'll see later in especially Metallic Madness 1 when I get there. That was a really, really solid Quartz Quadrant 2. I'm once again just time traveling to the present because there's a little bit of a level design difference at the top here, which will allow me to move in Peel Out into this wall and just zip right to the end. So that was a really solid Quartz Quadrant 2. All right. Yeah. This run's going quite well so far. Quartz Quadrant 3, this is kind of the first breather level that you get um, in terms of the boss. It's the first kind of actually decently long stage. And it's all just because the boss. Ooh, I'm gonna charge that up a bit more so I go a bit faster. Jump out of that wall. Alright, and here's the boss. So this boss, again, it's a bit unique, but it's actually quite easy. You just want to be running at the right side uh, as much as you can, and that it just pulls Robotnik down because it's creating friction, is the idea of the boss. But so. There's not much you can actually do to speed this up. Just turn around because you obviously don't want to get hit by these little blobs that are coming down. But so after this, going to be moving on to Wacky Workbench, which is uh, quite notorious for being garbage level design. <laughs> a lot of people think in uh, Sonic CD. Basically, the bottom of the stage has like a bouncy floor that continuously shoves you up to the top. But what it ends up meaning in speedrunning is it's an extremely cycle-based zone because you do want to use the bouncy part sometimes, but other times you don't. And because they're flashing on a cycle, it's basically you have a perfect idea of how you want the stage to go, but if you mess up just a little bit, then all the cycles are wrong. Like all the platforms, all the bouncies are just at the completely wrong time and everything will go wrong, basically. So hopefully no mistakes here. That's gone well. So a little optimization here, it's just like taking the future signpost there allows the time travel to start earlier. See, it starts here before I actually get the past signpost. So it doesn't take as long for the time travel to happen there on the past. That was a perfect start. Oh, this level is also extremely risky in that I could, uh, I could soft lock the game here, which doesn't happen anywhere else. Alright, perfect. Alright. 818, 818, 818. Okay. Jump, jump, jump. Get up there, get up there, get up there, get up there. Alright, that's the end of the stage. Alright, that was good. If I move too far to the left in that uh, in the wall there, because I'm obviously below the end of the stage, the game will soft lock because your controls get locked. Um, and yeah, jumping out of the wall there is is icky. It's not very consistent at all. But I got it, so everything's going well. Pick up this. Oh, and in case you didn't notice, when you're in this, when the blue sparkles are coming, you actually have invincibility. So abuse that there to bounce on that enemy. 
activate the time travel really early because it generates right at the start of the stage. So I'm just gonna wait here for a little bit. One of four. Because if I went early there, that would have been bouncing and it would have shoved me up. Really long extended MPO there, really good. Here. I think I've still got enough time. Beautiful, beautiful. That was perfect. That was awesome. So I wanted to make sure I wanted to make sure the uh, the floor wasn't bouncing when I first got there, so I could keep some speed. But then was bouncing for the second uh, after I jumped. Bounce up to the end of the stage, so they could bounce me up to the top route, which is where I wanted to be. That's right. That was nice. The little cycle's good there. Wacky Workbench 3. Alright, so this is a very similar level to Quartz Quadrant 3 in that the level's actually quite short, but the boss is quite long. But cycles are still really important in this stage as well. Oh, okay. I'm gonna have to move and peel out from here. Go inside. Alright, just gonna jump out here. Ooh, didn't quite get over that. But the boss is just over here, so it's all good. Alright, this boss really simple. He just, just got to hit him a couple of times. And it doesn't really matter when you hit him for the first three hits, as long as it's within like three seconds. So it's extremely easy. Platform up with these little blocks. Alright, all good. Alright, so for the last hit, there is uh, something that you can go for if you hit him absolutely straight away, which is really risky because if you jump too early, you won't get the height you need, you'll just fall down. Uh, you can save just a tiny little bit of time. I might have actually got it here. Nah, not quite. But if you hit him straight away, the uh, the bottom will actually still be bouncing, and so these those little blocks there would still be bouncing, so I wouldn't have to jump over them. Extremely minor time save. That was still fine, all good. Moving on to Stardust Speedway. Again, absolutely brutal this zone. Um, the time travel here right at the start is extremely precise, and even if you do everything correctly, it can still fail. The time, tra time travel can just not activate right at the end as you hit a wall. Oh, perfect, perfect. Absolutely perfect, all right. And now I'm going to be falling straight down, right to where the generator is. Beautiful. Skip that little loop there. That was a butter smooth start of Speedway 1. I reckon that's the best I've ever gotten in a run before, 22.6. That was fantastic. Alright, so start of Speedway 2 is I'm going to be doing a level run, which, which if you were watching the run before happened quite often. Um, but it's the only one that happens in this run, in this game. But so the way I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna activate the time travel right at the start, get the robot generator, and then I'm gonna pick up speed chips. And in this game, if you have speed shoes and if you just feel out at the left side of the stage, you will just form a level wrap every single time. It just tends to not actually be useful. Um, right, so there's the speeches. Now I'm going to work my way back to the start of the stage. Actually a little bit tricky. Got to set up here. Alright. Perfect. And there's my level up. So that's... Uh, I'm basically underflowing my X position so that uh, I have a negative X coordinate uh, value. And so that then underflows to a really high value. And so Sonic ends up at the right side of the stage. And so I was just waiting for the camera to actually catch up to me. That was really solid as well. Really good. Okay, Stardust Speedway 3. So this is the race against Metal Sonic. So Metal Sonic does have rubber banding. So for this to go absolutely optimally, I actually want to be a certain way ahead of him because I have to wait for Metal Sonic to finish the race. So I want him to be going as fast as he possibly can as well. And so for that to happen, I have to be going quite fast. Um, I basically can't make a mistake to get the absolute optimal option.
Oh, yeah, that's a mistake. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, if that laser hits me, I die. So, <laughs> I don't want that to happen. The metal's gonna be going really slow now because, well, for a while anyway. I don't know if I'm far enough ahead to do the kill out here. I'll try. Uh, I'm facing the wrong way. Okay, far enough. Alright, I'm ahead of him now, so I'll still win. Jump over here. That's not that big a deal. It's just the metal went a bit slower than it usually does. One. <laughs> Alright. So that stage actually ends when Amy grabs onto you. But sometimes in some positions she just stands next to you and won't actually grab you. You've got to move a little bit. She did that there. Wasted just a tiny little bit of time. Alright, so Metallic Madness won. This is the hardest stage in the run by an absolute country mile. Uh, and the reason is it's got a lot of kind of variance in your time travel could just get stopped by you being on slopes. But it also has the hardest MPO in the run by a mile. This is all gone perfectly so far. This is the pass time that I actually want to be using. Alright, got over. That was perfect. So the MPO is coming up pretty much straight away. So the reason it's so hard is you have to have a tiny heal out charge because you have an extremely small amount of space to, before you transfer into the moving heal out stage. All right, didn't quite get it there. All right, there we go. There it is. All right, now just inside this little wall here. Then I just fall down, and there's the robot generator. Those are really good platforms, actually, because those are actually pretty much random of the position they're going to be in. Got really good luck there. That's actually a pretty good time for Metallic Madness 1. I usually get, you know, around 50 seconds, so really happy with that. Alright, Metallic Madness 2. This stage is actually, I take an intentional death on this stage because the robot generator is just in such an awful position that it's faster to just die and then restart the stage. Once you actually break it open. It's really nice, use the wheels, grab the signpost, and time travel here. over here, get the generator, move down here, and I'm going to wait for this platform to actually crush me and kill me, because I'm just, like I said, just such an awful position, it's faster to just die, and end up over here. I'm going to die again. Okay, so the reason I died there was, uh, what I'm trying to do is get above the roof, and... If you fall down there and you don't get above the roots straight away, you can't actually make your way back. Which is why I had to die to get to the start of the stage, so like that. Now I'm above the roof, all good. Let's the stage. Oh, wow. Wow, I have no idea what to do now. <laughs> I have no idea what to do. I, I don't know where I am, I'm just gonna die again. It's gonna be easier than working my way back up. Alright, gotta find another enemy to kill me. Right. Die again, try again. Nah, because if you don't actually end up on the top route like you have won, you have to go through a section where you turn into Mini Sonic and it takes like two minutes to get through that section. It's actually faster to die and redo it again. Oh, that was good. That's fine, I can save this. So I can just peel out here, fall down here. But yeah, I, I went straight through that hole there um, when I was falling down, which... Quite unlucky, I've never had that happen before. I've never had quite enough speed to actually get that far. Alright, so here, just waiting for these platforms to fall. If I time this correctly, like, really precisely on the second one, I can just make it up like that. Alright, not bad. Last level coming up now, Metallic Madness 3. So 
So there's, once again, as you've seen in pretty much every single stage since Palm Tree Panic, there's a little MPO, uh, just a little zip with the moving peel out just to save a tiny bit of time right at the start. First part of this boss, these little bugs, these things are awful. This first one just goes into a random awful position. That was terrible. Alright, I didn't die though. And I got both the uh, the last two bugs in one hit, which is really good. Manipulated their position just a little bit. Ideally, you don't get hit at all and you have lots of rings. Uh, hopefully two is enough. Because I want to be taking damage here on purpose. Um, try and save some time so that ring that I got there after the second hit sometimes that can just fall through the floor and then I would have no rings and then these last two hits would be really risky but it bounced up so I should be fine oh I wanted to take damage there but I'll just hit him without taking damage that's fine position myself in the middle here because this shot uh, fires from the side that you're furthest away from so being right in the middle is best one more hit on the sky, so take damage, and I'm finished. That was really good that was Alright, so that's Sonic CD, all good futures. Oh. Stop the time, whatever, it's 26 something, well under estimate. Crush it. Um, but yeah, so I hope you enjoyed that run, guys. That was actually pretty good that run can be so brutal you can lose so many minutes on different stages Jeez, 26 that's way lower than i was expecting that's a really good time well done me but all right it's the last run of the sonic